Choosing the right mic for your video project can be complicated, but luckily I'm here with a special guest that we'll hear from later to help you guys through that. Now let's roll that pointless intro clip. I don't even know why I have it. So what I use in most of my applications and almost every video that you've seen from me is actually a cardioid condenser microphone on a boom pole. And so it's right here above me, pointing down at my chest area. Now this specific microphone is the Shure SM81. It is cardioid, like I mentioned, which is not necessarily the best for dialogue, but it's what I have, and I've been happy with the results. If you are buying a microphone specifically for dialogue, you might be better suited to get a hyper cardioid condenser microphone. It is slightly more directional and has a little more side rejection, but a little less rear rejection than a cardioid microphone, but if you're in an environment, an indoor environment, where you need some sound rejection because you don't want all the ambience or er, ambience, ambience, ambiance, how do you say that? I don't know how to say that. But if you do get crazy echo in your room, it'll pick up a little bit less echo than a cardioid microphone would. If I were to give some suggestions for that, the Rode M5 would be kind of a budget option. It's $100 for one. Now you will need a recorder or an audio interface for this microphone so you can capture the audio. If you were to get a higher end, uh, really a great hypercardioid microphone, then the AT4035B from Audio-Technica is a very good microphone. It's just, it's $550 or, or somewhere around there, where the other, the latter, was $100. Now, if you don't wanna go the boom mic route, then you can actually go with a dynamic microphone. The downside to that is that you would generally have to have a dynamic microphone in shot because they're a little less sensitive, so you'd have to have it closer to the subject. And a lot of people do that, and it's fine. I, I'm totally cool with how that looks. You could have it just below you. Now, I do have a video over which dynamic microphone you should get for your price range. And so I'll link that right up here. And I'm not gonna go much more into detail on those microphones, because you can just check that video out. Now, I will say, it was my first video I ever recorded. Not the greatest quality, but whatever. I still stand behind the content, so go check that out. Now for the next option, we're gonna actually go on a field trip, so follow me. Okay, walk with me while we talk about this next microphone. The good thing about this one is that we can move around just like this. So if you're a vlogger or I, I, don't, I don't know any other categories for this style. I'm not a big fan of it because I get really winded after walking just a few steps and then I get out of breath and then you don't even understand what I'm saying. <laughs> but um, no, it's, it's, it's a good option if you are moving around a lot in your shots. So instead of just using your camera microphone, which doesn't sound very good, we'll use that as reference right now. It, it's kind of tinny. It doesn't have a very low range or you can get a microphone, an external microphone for it. What I have is the Rode Video Micro, and I actually have it plugged into an external recorder because I'm not a huge fan of how it sounds in my camera because it's very noisy. Got a video on that right there. You can go check it out. But there are other options. There's better options. This is a cheaper and smaller option. All a few of those options linked below. Now this is very good, again, for the handheld vlogger. Now if you are going to be moving around a lot, then there are lapel or lavalier microphones for that. Obi, come. Look at this crazy guy. Look at this crazy guy. Good boy. Now, I don't actually have a lavalier microphone, so I wouldn't be the best person to give you examples of them, but I do have a friend that would be the perfect person to talk to you about that. So I'm gonna hand it over to my good buddy, Jacob. I'm afraid now that I'm hosting him on my show, y'all are all gonna ditch me and start watching his videos. It's a little insecurity of mine. Now, he goes very in depth on these lavalier microphones and I'm super thankful for him being on the show. So I'm gonna hand it over to him and let him talk about those. What's up everybody, my name is Jacob. I am a wedding videographer from Houston, Texas and I'm here to talk to you guys about lav mics. Lav mics are super great for many applications. You can use them as a main source of audio and you can also use them as a redundant backup for your other main source of audio. Lav mics are really great for me 
being in the live event industry. I can put a live mic on a subject, have them talk without having to put something like a handheld mic or a shotgun mic in their face. And sometimes they're far across the room. I still need to capture that audio and my on-camera mic just is not gonna cut it. So putting a microphone on them, hiding it and making it discreet is something that is really easy to do. It's very important because I don't want to impede on the situations or things that are happening. Now what you're hearing right now is me recording audio on a lavalier microphone to a recorder that is in a very untreated room. And this is just gonna show you kind of what you can expect, what you're gonna pick up. With a lavalier mic, most of them are omnidirectional. I haven't actually ran into any cardioid uh, lavalier microphones, but I know that there are differences. Now the omnidirectional is going to pick up a little bit more of the room atmosphere and little things that might fall or a person cries or laughs out in you know, the crowd. Things like that is what's gonna be picked up, whereas a cardioid will pick up more of the things that are directly in front of it or what's being spoken directly into it. I believe that's right. Aaron, if that's not true, you can just cut that out. <laughs> um, that's just what I've experienced when using these microphones. Now, lovely mics, they are just mics and they need to be captured by some sort of device. So the way you can do that is you can use a wireless system or you can use a wired system. And the advantages of a wireless system is one, the audio is usually recorded directly to your video source. So you don't have to sync up and post. Though there can be some drifting, that is usually not something you have to worry about. Whereas if you do a recorder, then you do have to sync up and post, which can be kind of tricky depending on what program you use and how loud your camera mic is and in conjunction with the lavalier mic. Now, I personally use wired mics for everything because I don't wanna have to worry about frequencies or getting my frequencies mixed up with maybe a DJ or a church microphone or anything like that, or even like a radio. I've seen situations where that happened. Now, this is not an experience for everybody. I know plenty of people who use wireless systems for all their live events, for all their videos, and they have fantastic results. It's just not something that I felt like I needed to adopt for my shooting style, so I just haven't. What I do is I take the live lavalier mic, plug it directly into my DR-10Ls from Tascam, and they have backup recording, and I can hide them very easily because they're just like really small recorders you'll see here in a second. Now, what I like to do is either hide them, the mic the best we can, like it is now, with just an easy little sticky and run it through the shirt. Or maybe I am attaching it to someone wearing a jacket. I can easily put the clip onto the jacket and then run the cord through the jacket and put it like in a pocket or somewhere. Another thing that I could do is attach the sticky to the mic and the sticky inside the jacket. Now, the problem that you run into with stickies and mics uh, putting attached to clothing is that you get a lot of rustling. So hopefully you can hear something like this that is muffling the audio. And usually the people aren't talking when they're moving, but sometimes a little bit of motion can really kind of mess with your audio. So the solution for that is to clip it on something that's not gonna be easily moved. So what we'll do now is I will show you guys how I will mic somebody on the outside of my shirt. And this is something that you can do as well. And you can kind of play around with this to see if you like it underneath or if you like it attached to your talent subject or, your, or yourself whenever you're recording your films. So this is um, this, this recorder that I have right here. This is the Tascam DR10L. It's about 200 bucks for this and the, record, and the microphone. Now this microphone is really great. I used it for years and I only recently updated it to these little tiny microphones that I'm using now, which are the Sankin COS11D with a TRS attachment. And just so you know, TRS just allows you to attach it to the uh, Tascam and it allows you to attach to other systems as well. Whereas there are many different types of attachments for other kind of recorders or wireless receivers for lavalier mics. 
So in this situation, all I would do is just take the mic and run it up the shirt and attach it here. And then this right here, this is the audio that you, that you would get. Something like this is really simple, it's really easy. It's not the most attractive, but it's also not the most noticeable. And it sure as heck beats having a big old like studio mic with a boom pole while somebody's trying to have a special moment or you're just trying to get something done quick. That's also an advantage for using lavalier mics is they're small and they're mobile and you can take them on and put them off quickly and easily without a whole lot of trouble from like your subject or yourself. So this is the audio that you're gonna get from that. And again, the advantages is that it's on the outside. That means the clothes rustle is not gonna be so bad, but it also just kinda is visually less pleasing. Now, like I said, this microphone and the recorder is about $200 uh, altogether. And there are deals all the time happening, so you can easily pick it up for less than that. But if money is an issue, which a lot of people are just like, hey, I don't have 200 bucks to spend, I'm just trying to start a really you know, dope YouTube channel and record my audio separately and sync it up a post. Well, that is where Rode comes in. This little mic right here is a really good lavalier mic that connects to your phone if you have a newer iPhone. I have to use the dongle. Um, if you have an Android phone, sometimes you can you can easily connect it via like these dongles and stuff like that. But it's really simple because you can use it like this and then there's just a simple little app that you can use. Um, and these mics are really great. They're not bad. I used them for a couple of years, but you're introducing a lot of potential problems and I'll get into what those are. So I'm gonna go ahead and just attach this one here so you can get a good idea of what to expect whenever you're using these mics. So one problem that you run into is that you're relying on a phone and phones, anything can happen. You could receive a message, you could get an Amber Alert, you could get uh, any kind of messaging or phone calls. Somebody could accidentally touch the screen and you could lose any kind of audio that you had before. Now, this might not be a problem for you if you're in a controlled environment like many people are. So if you're trying to save money, these are only about 50 bucks. I hope this really helps. If you have any questions about lav mics, please let me know and leave comments down and we can talk about it. Aaron, if you have any other tips, please let me know because you are way more of an audio expert than I am. You know, a lot of this echo that you might hear or any kind of sounds that the mics might pick up, you can easily be fixed in post and Aaron is a great resource for that. If you want to see more of my work and see the or hear these mics in action, uh, you can go to youtube.com slash Jake Austin Films. It's a brand new channel. I'm about to be posting more and more wedding films and hopefully more content like this if you guys like it. So yeah, thanks Aaron for having me and I will catch you later. A special thanks again to Jacob for talking to us about lavalier microphones. Go check his YouTube channel out. Go check his Instagram out. He's an awesome guy and an amazing videographer and photographer. So give him a look-see, a look-see. Now let's just do a brief overview on these microphones and which one you should be using. So if you're doing something like my channel does and you're just sitting down talking, you don't move too much, then a boom mic would be a great option for you. If you have a ton of echo and you're not willing to cut down on that with um, some acoustic treatment or just at home acoustic treatment, I'm gonna promote one of my videos again, then a dynamic mic um, would be a great option for you. And so that might be what you wanna go with. But if you're on the go and you are the vlog style and you're actually holding your camera, you don't really like move around, you're never too far away from it, then a microphone on your camera, uh, like the Rode Video Micro, would be a great option for you. And last but not least, lavalier microphones would be a great setup for an interview style and you didn't wanna have multiple dynamic microphones because that can eventually get pretty pricey too or if you intend on moving around a lot while you're talking uh, if i move around then the audio clearly changes pretty bad so if you have a type of project where you're working in a shop or something then a lavalier microphone would be potentially a really good option for you as long as the rustling noise isn't going to be too much of a concern but yeah guys thanks for watching thanks for checking this out if you found this useful then drop a like or a comment and subscribe. I really appreciate it. I'll catch you guys later.
I didn't even realize my flies undone. Oops.